Welcome back to Probability and Statistics. We're going to take another look today at sampling. Now, I told you guys last time we talked about making uh, inferences based on samples. And for each one of them, we said that we were talking about random samples. And I promised that the next time we got to this, we would talk about what makes a sample random or biased. Well, first off, it comes from the population. And like we said last time, the population is a group of individuals to be studied or analyzed. And we also said that a, any sample is a subgroup of that population. So like we said about the middle school, say you want to do a study in the middle school about the uh, favorite pizza topping of the middle school. Well, you wouldn't ask every single person in the entire middle school. That just takes way too long. So you would take a sample, uh, and you would get, hopefully, what's called a random sample. Now, talking about what's a random sample or a representative sample is a little bit difficult. So we're going to start with what's called a biased sample. Now, you've probably heard the word bias somewhere before. Okay, someone is biased. A referee is biased. Well, that means that the referee is playing favorites. Okay, it's not being fair. It's the same kind of idea in statistics. A biased sample is a sample, so it's a subgroup of the population that you're going to do the survey, in which every member of the population, or excuse me, in which some members of the population have a better chance of selection than other members. It is a sample in which some members of the population have a better chance of selection than other members. Okay, now we don't want that. We want the sample to be reasonable. We want it to be fair. Okay, we want to make sure that everyone has an equal chance of selection. That way, we can be sure that we have a good sample from which we can draw good information. So that's the idea behind a biased sample. Now, we don't want biased samples. We want random samples. Random samples ensure that we get better information about the population so that we can make inferences from our sample. A random sample is the opposite of a biased sample. It's a sample in which each member of the population has an equal chance of selection. Okay, now it doesn't guarantee that everyone gets selected. It just means that everyone in that population has an equal chance of selection. So let's say, for instance, you, were you wanted to ask people um, in the school, instead of what their favorite pizza topping was, what their favorite school sport was. Now, if you, wanted to, if you got a biased sample, maybe that would happen because you stood outside of the basketball game and asked the people walking into that basketball game what their favorite sport was. They're walking to basketball. That's probably their favorite sport. Okay, but a random sample, instead of standing outside the basketball court, maybe you walk around the cafeteria and you ask randomly selected members of the class. That would give you a better random sample. Okay, then we talk about what's called a representative sample. Now, a representative sample usually occurs when you take a random sample. You get what's called a representative sample. And what this means, guys, basically what this means is uh, members or characteristics in the sample are proportionally represented or represented proportional to those in the population. So we have these three different samples, two samples from the same population. So let's go back to that example we were talking about with uh, favorite pizza toppings in the middle school. Now, in the middle school, the population is pretty much equally split between eighth graders, sixth graders, and seventh graders. It's not perfect. Sixth grade's pretty big. Uh, eighth grade is a little smaller than seventh grade, but they're all relatively close. They're pretty close to the same size. So we want to make sure that when we take a sample, we have equal numbers or close to equal numbers of each grade in our sample. So sample A would be representative, okay, because there's roughly the same number or the same proportions of eighth graders in a sample as there are in the population. Same idea with sixth graders, same idea with seventh graders. I don't have weird amounts, okay? Everything kind of matches up. We want our sample to look like a smaller version of our population. Okay? The numbers are going to be smaller because it's a sample instead of the entire population, 
but the ratios should be similar. When I look at how many 8th graders there are compared to how many 7th graders, it should look like they're about the same. Now then I have sample B over here. In sample B, there's a whole lot more 8th graders than there are 6th or 7th graders. This would not be representative, okay, because we don't have similar proportions. We have a whole lot more 8th graders than 6th or 7th graders. 6th or 7th grade looks like they're about the same amount, but 8th grade is twice as much as either of those. So that would not be a representative sample, and that's what we want. We want representatives. So sample B, we would consider this one non-representative, probably not random, and we wouldn't want to use any results that we got from that sample. So let's look at a couple of examples, and let's think about whether they are representative, uh, random, or biased. So example one, Logan wants to estimate the average age of vehicles driven in Brentwood. He reviews a list of registered vehicles and notices that there are many more cars than trucks. He then selects a sample by choosing 100 cars and 100 trucks from that list. Is the sample representative? Why or why not? Now remember what we said about representative. Representative means that our sample looks like a smaller version of the entire population. The population has a whole lot more cars than trucks. Okay, it's not an equal split between those two. It's actually quite imbalanced. Okay, many more cars than trucks. But then for his sample, he chooses 100 cars and 100 trucks. That's not representative. Okay? Our sample should look like our population. So this sample is not representative because the population has many more cars than trucks. but the sample has an even split. Okay, that's not representative. That's not what we want. We want our sample to look like a smaller version of our population. So if the population has a whole lot more cars than trucks, the sample should also have a whole lot more cars than trucks. Okay? Okay, number two. Karime is studying statistics of popular American songs from 1900 to 1945. She obtains a list of 500 songs ordered alphabetically from the period from which, from which she selects 30 songs for her sample. Will each method produce a random sample? Why or why not? Now remember, random sample. Random just means that ev every single song on that list has an equal chance of being selected. It doesn't mean that every song is going to be selected. She's only picking 30. But we want to say that each one of those songs has an equal chance of selection. So for choice A, she chooses the first 15 songs and the last 15 songs. Do you think that one is random? Does, it, does that give every single song on that list an equal chance of being selected? Well, no, because it only lets you pick the, the first 15 and the last 15. And we said that it's in alphabetical order, so that would suggest that all those songs in the middle, every song that doesn't start with A, and doesn't or start with Z, is probably not going to get selected. So this one is not random. Because all songs in the middle have no chance of selection. Okay, we want it to be random, which means we want every single song to have an equal chance of selection. Okay, how about choice, oh, I've got two choice A's here. So let's call this first one choice A, let's call this second one choice B. So choice B here. Number the songs from 001 to 500 and use a computer to generate 30 random three-digit whole numbers and select those songs. Would this one produce a random sample? Well, as this word here would indicate, random, probably. Okay, so I want to think, I want to lean towards this one would be a random sample, but let's really think about it. Let's double check just to make sure. So we number, number the songs from 1 to 500, okay, and we use three digits for every single one. All right? Then we use a computer to generate 30 random three-digit whole numbers. Okay, so no decimals, no fractions, 
It's going to generate 30 numbers, and they're all three digits. And the computer is going to generate those numbers randomly using what's called a random number generator. Creative, right? So does that seem like a random sample? Does everyone have a fair, equal chance of being selected? Well, yes. The computer here uses a random number generator. So this sample is random. Okay, then how about this one? Choose a number from one to six by rolling a die. So that's fairly random. And then beginning with that number, select every tenth song from the list. Well, at first glance, this one seems like it's random because you're rolling a die and you're going to pick every tenth song. So it seems like everyone has an equal chance of being selected. But we're only picking 30 songs from a list of 500, which means that the last 200 songs on that list have a very limited chance of being selected. In fact, they have zero chance of being selected. Think about it. If you roll a die, it doesn't really matter what number it shows, one through six. Let's say it shows number three. Okay, and then you pick every 10 songs. So the next one's 13, the next one's going to be 23, the next one's going to be 33, the next one's going to be 43, so on and so forth, but you're only picking 30 of them. Okay, so you're, only, you're not going to get those last songs. It would be totally impossible to get the song 500 on that, on that list. So the last few songs on that list have no chance of selection at all, which means that this one would be a non-random sample. So this sample is not random. Because the last songs on this list have no chance of selection. Okay, so really think about that. Just because you're rolling a die doesn't make it totally random. You need to really think, does every single member of this population have an equal chance of being selected? Okay, and the only one that really does is this one. This is the only one that really makes a random selection. What you want for a random selection, guys, is basically you put all the names in a hat and you draw out a few names. That's really the only way to make it random. So if your sample strategy seems like that or if it looks like that, all, everything, all the possibilities in one bucket, and then you pull one list at a time or one name at a time, that's going to be a random sample. Anything else is not going to give you a random sample. So let's take a look at the couple on the back. Okay, let's take a look, tell you what. Let's skip number three for a minute, and let's look at number four. Olivia wants to know what her favorite sport, whoop. Olivia wants to know what the favorite sport of the seventh grade is, just the seventh grade this time. She asks 20 of her friends what their favorite sport is and records the results. Is Olivia's sample random or biased? Well, think about it. She's asking 20 of her friends. Now, at first glance, that might seem random because she's just picking 20 of her friends. But they're all her friends. So you can think that your friends, think about your group of friends. You probably have some similar interests. In particular, your favorite sport for most of you is probably similar or if not the same. So this one would be definitely be a biased sample. So Olivia's sample is biased because she is only selecting from her group of friends. Okay, anyone who's not her friend has no chance of being selected. Now, maybe Olivia is a pretty popular girl. Maybe she is friends with the entire seventh grade. But there's probably a few people that she's not likely to talk to. So though those people would not, be, would not have a chance of being selected for a sample, which makes it not random. So what's another way that we could come up with Olivia actually producing a random sample? Well, really the only way to do it is to make sure that every single person in the entire seventh grade has an equal chance of selection. That's what we have to make happen. So the best way to do that would be to write the name of each member on a slip of paper or on slips of paper. You're not going to write them all on one slip. It'll be a pretty big slip of paper. 
write the name of each member of the class on slips of paper, place the slips in a hat or a bowl or a bucket or some receptacle that will hold them all, and randomly select. Uh, she wanted 20 members, so randomly select 20 slips and record the names. Okay, now there's a couple other methods that I'm sure we could come up with, but they're all going to have, they all need to have some real element of random chains. We need to put everyone's name on the same list and give every single name on that list an equal chance of selection. If we just pick the people that we see walking down the hallway, well, what about the people with their lockers downstairs? Okay, if we only pick the people in her first period class, well, what about the people that she doesn't see in that first period class? These are things that will cause bias. And if we want a random sample, we need to make sure that every single member of the entire population, in this case, the entire seventh grade, has an equal chance of being selected. So, let's go back and look at these words again. Okay, we talked about population sample a couple of times. A random sample is a sample in which each member of the population has an equal chance of selection. So we want to make sure that every single member of the entire population has the same chance of being selected. We're not playing favorites here. We're giving everyone a fair shot. That will hopefully lead to a representative sample, meaning that the characteristics in the sample are proportional to those in the population. So like we said with our seventh grade class, or excuse me, our middle school, we want to make sure that our sample looks like a smaller version of the entire population. Okay, otherwise, we probably have a biased sample, a sample in which some members of the population have a better chance of selection than other members. So a biased sample is when you're playing favorites. Okay, you're not being fair. You're totally biased. A random sample is very, very fair. Every single member of the entire population has an equal and fair chance of being selected. So think about that when you're coming up with your samples. Make sure that you have every single member of your entire population, whatever you're studying, make sure that every single member of that population has an equal chance of selection. All right, thanks, guys.